This is going to be a quick tutorial on how you can properly polar align any SynScan mount, such as anything from Skywatcher or Orion, using nothing but the hand controller. There are time cards down below, so if you don't need to see me set up and balance the mount, then you can skip right ahead to the alignment procedure. Just a note that you will need to do at least a two or three star alignment before you can move on to the polar alignment routine. So I do quickly run through how to do a three star alignment as well. So we're gonna run through exactly how you use this hand controller to polar align your mount. I've got a Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro here, uh, but it could be an EQ6R, EQM35, uh, several other models, uh, or also the, uh, the Orion Atlas or Sirius uh, would work the exact same way as well. So uh, a lot of popular mounts that use this method. This can be a really good way to polar align your mount if a, you don't want to have to use an external computer, which I don't a lot of the time, especially if I'm remote. Uh, and secondly, also if you don't have a direct view of the pole, so maybe there's a building or trees in your way like I have in certain parts of my front yard, uh, but also for me in the southern hemisphere it's just a nightmare trying to find the octans, particularly because when I look south towards the pole it's straight into the light dome of the city and it's just virtually impossible. So this method does not require you to be able to see the pole at all. You don't need to use the poloscope, uh, everything's going to be done through the hand controller. Now before we go any further, I will say that you are going to need something to help you locate stars. Uh, it's very hard to be able to try and point your telescope directly at a star. So you're going to need, uh, I've got a red dot finder, you could also use a, a finder scope or something like that. Uh, but you will need something to just ride on top of your telescope just to you know, give you a wider field to help you locate stars uh, a little bit easier. Enough talk, let's jump outside and start the process. I want to do as much of the setup as possible during daytime. It's just much easier when you can see everything clearly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your azimuth bolts are centered. They can only move five degrees left and right. So we want to make sure that it is in the center so that we have as much play as possible in whichever direction we might need to move for the final alignment. Next, I want to roughly find the north or south pole depending on your hemisphere. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going into my phone and I'm checking the compass settings that I'm using true north and not magnetic north. Uh, so there is going to be a difference depending on your location between uh, true north and magnetic north. So make sure that is ticked. And then I'm just going to use the phone's compass to point the telescope exactly south. I'm not going to move the azimuth bolts here. I'm going to physically lift the tripod and put it in position. If you like, you can put your phone against the poloscope cap and confirm this. Next up, I'm going to level the tripod. Again, I'm just going to use my phone for that. You could use a bubble level as well, but you know, phone app will work just, to, just as well. And then I want to set everything up. So get my telescope, my camera, and just everything that I'm going to use for the setup. So I've got my red dot finder there. If you're going to use a dew heater, put that on. Uh, so just make sure that you know, we're as good to go as possible. Uh, now I'm going to get my scope balanced, so I'm just moving the dovetail slightly. I'm going to check my declination balance, it's looking pretty good. And then same with RA, just get that counterweight in and then there we go, nice and balanced. So you can use these buttons to change any of the numbers as you need to, so you're going to enter your longitude, then your latitude, uh, then you're going to enter your time zone, your elevation, the date, the time, and then you just have to tell if it's daylight savings or not. Okay, I'll tell you the polar, where Polaris is in the poloscope. If you're in the northern hemisphere, you could use that. Um, for me in the southern hemisphere, that's useless, so we're going to not care about that. Uh, okay, and then begin alignment. So I am going to hit yes. I want to begin alignment. Uh, and then I'm going to do the three star alignment because I find that the one and two star are just never really that accurate when it comes to um, the go to capabilities. So do a three star align. Okay, and now I'm just going to pick my stars. Uh, I'm going to start with. 
and Terry's. And it's just going to slew to where it thinks Antares is based on where we've kind of roughly polar aligned it to. So it's not going to be exact, um, but it'll be in the ballpark. And then we're just going to use the uh, buttons here to, to get it dialed in exactly. And this is where our red dot find is going to come in handy. All right, pro tip. Don't forget to turn your laser off the night before and let the battery die. Luckily I had one spare. All right, so this is where you're gonna use that laser to just get uh, the telescope pointed at the star you want uh, using the hand controller. Um, it defaults to a rate of three, which is a really slow slew rate unless you're very close to it. So uh, if you hit the number two rate button and just change, I normally change it to seven. Uh, and then just look at that through the laser. So now I'm just going to use the, the buttons here to get the star centered in the eyepiece. We don't need to be perfectly focused at this point. In fact, being out of focus can help. Just makes the star look a little bit bigger and take up more of the screen. This is where you could slow the rate down as well to get a more precise alignment. Okay, that's good enough for me. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, now it's going to ask for my second star and I'm probably going to pick Altair. And it'll slew to where it thinks that is. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna get down, look through the laser. I'll have to change that rate again. And then you might be able to see on the screen there, there's a, there's a dot now in the middle. So I'm just going to get that centered again. Okay, and that looks good. So I'll hit enter and third star. All right, so that's all done. I'm going to hit enter. And it says alignment successful. Okay, don't care. Okay, so now this is the important part. So it's telling me this Mel and Maz. So basically this is the error in my altitude and azimuth respectively. Um, so I'm actually not too bad in my, my elevation, my altitude, uh, 18 arc minutes off, uh, but a little over two degrees off in Azimuth. So that's good. That's within the five degrees. We'll be able to compensate for that. Um, so now uh, we'll just hit enter. And we don't want to do a three star align anymore. We've just done that. So if we hit the down button, then we get to this polar alignment option. So that's what we want. Okay. And now we just have to choose a star. So that's pretty good. It's, uh, it's put it in the, uh, in the frame here of the camera. It's not exactly centered, but it's certainly good enough. So anyway, what we're going to do now is it's telling me to align the object in the center. So again, I'm just going to use these arrow buttons to get that star exactly in the center. So I'm just using the buttons here. To get that centered nicely. Oops. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'll hit enter. Okay, now it's telling me that I've got this 18 arc minutes of error in my altitude. What's going to happen now is I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that the telescope is going to move. And you can see that star is drifting out of the picture. It's coming back a little bit. And it's pretty much put it back in the center because at the end of the day, 18 arc minutes is not a lot of difference, but we'll just move the altitude bolts. Um, so yeah, at this point, we're just going to use the altitude bolts to get that star back in the center. So we're not going to use this controller right now, just the altitude bolts. So I've got that centered up nicely again. I'll hit enter. 
and now it's telling me that I've only got five arc seconds of error. Hopefully you can see that in the altitude. So we've done a super good job there. So now we're just going to do the same thing for the azimuth. This one's two degrees, so it's going to be a bit more work to get this right. So again, I'll hit enter and you can see that star's drifting out of the picture and it's going to drift well out of the picture so it's good to pay attention to which way it's drifting. I'm looking at the telescope and it's moving kind of to the right so I, need to, I know that I need to move it back to the left and actually it's, it's come back just on the edge of the screen there so that's going to help me a lot. Okay and at this point I'm just going to use as you might have guessed the azimuth bolts to get that back in the center. All right, so I've got it centered up again. And again, I'll hit enter. And look at that. <laughs> so we've got... Now it did mess up our uh, elevation, our altitude a tiny bit. So we're at two arc minutes, but we're at four arc seconds in azimuth. And that's it. We're now fully aligned. I can just hit enter to get out of here. And then I'll just go escape, escape, and uh, I can just choose my target, uh, which I'll, I'm going to be doing M16 tonight. Enter. Yep, view object. And then telescope will slew to it. And so that's it. We're now fully polar aligned, our go-to setup as well, and we're all good to go for a night of imaging. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna start my shoot, and I'll see you next time.